Hey boys and girls, welcome again to um, Monroe Live. Uh, we're still working on the Maki teardown. And uh, today, again with Ben, um, we're gonna be talking a little bit about what we saw on the front end of the vehicle. Uh, so Ben, thanks for uh, being here again. Of course. And um, we got this big hole here. Now, um, uh, most people look at cars and whatnot and wonder about things. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that big hole there, Ben? All right, Sandy, this is the air intake for the cooling system. This will work with both the HVAC and the battery management cooling system. Uh, it is pulled through by a radiator fan that's on the inside, and it goes through the radiator and the condenser on the backside, which is the silver piece. You can see just a little bit of it right here. So the condenser is the thing that, um, that basically is one of the major components that's associated with HV with your... Uh, air conditioning system okay so these having these two things right together in tight format is basically how uh, the guys uh, at Ford got a chance to uh, put in a frunk whereas unfortunately the folks in um, uh, on the ID Ford uh, didn't think of that so let's let's go and talk a little bit about what went on top of this and um, and and that's called the fascia so over here is the fascia and, um, and why don't we talk a little bit about those louvers there, uh, Ben? Uh, these are the active grill shutters that Ford is using. Uh, they are controlled on the back <laughs> mechanically and they can open or shut depending on how fast the vehicle is going and how much air needs to be pulled in for the AC or the battery thermal management system. Uh, and this allows them to create better aerodynamics on the vehicle. So if you have something that's closed off, it gives you better aero, you get better uh, you'll get better range and then they only open up when they need to to and it get, reduces your range a little bit but that that will help them overall go farther per charge so the other thing is that uh, there's a lot of styling cues on here um, and you'll notice that the fascia has been uh, bright painted this is coming right out of the mold probably so this uh, these these uh, <clears throat> these um, apertures that you see or or uh, accent points, these are, um, these are something that turn into usually a big problem. Um, if you mask them during painting, it's really expensive. If you, um, if you put them on as an afterthought or an after effect, then you get a lot of nuts and bolts and screws. But ha let's have a look at, at what Ford did here to, uh, to really uh, um, amazing uh, uh, stuff as far as snap fits. Everywhere you see one of these little tags, and we just split it down the middle, everywhere you see a tag, those are snap fits holding those components together. So no screws. The operator will just take them in, in essence, push or maybe tap with the uh, uh, palm of their hand and snap, 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 and it's in. But the one that really I liked the best was this one here. This is the headlamp. And uh, Ben, why don't you uh, show them where all this stuff goes. All right, there are a few snap fits on the front. You can see these clips here uh, that they will locate to the fascia. And there are some, uh, some receptors here for those snap fits. So hey, when let they- me, Let me hold on. Uh... When the, the headlamps mount to the body in white first and when the fascia is brought in, there are, those clips will line up and they'll snap the fascia to the headlamp. This is a really good idea. Um, Any time that you can get rid of uh, threaded fasteners, it's a good day. So we really want to commend Ford on what they've done here. This has been a really good, uh, really good uh, example of um, how you can get the look uh, without a whole lot of cost and making it easier for the operators to put together. Anyway, the next thing we're going to talk about is something that is near and dear to my heart, safety. So we're going to talk about Sorb. Take it away. All right, SORB is small overlap rigid barrier, and that's a test where the vehicle is run at 40 miles an hour, and it hits a concrete barrier at 25% offset of the vehicle. So it's not hitting square on like in a T-bone, it's just offset. Uh, and if you look at the front of the vehicle, this is where the, uh, the line would be on the Mach-E. So what they have done to, uh, to help them pass this test, uh, they have a few SORB enablers here. They're, 
front impact beam is an extruded aluminum beam and it is curved at the outside. And it actually fastens to both the shotgun and the crush cans that are uh, integrated into the body in white. So this is going to be a very strong, strong section of the vehicle. And this is uh, in this in conjunction with the cradle that is brought all the way forward and has a tusk that sticks out that's integrated into the cradle. This pushes the vehicle away from the, uh, away from the barrier a little bit. Uh, this helps, helps get away from the, the, in, uh, the occupants inside the vehicle. So the next part that would hit the barrier is it's brought back and it hits the tire. The tire is, uh, some OEMs will try and get the tire to remove from the vehicle and spin around the outside. Ford's uh, strategy is to actually collapse the tire. So what the tire is doing is it is crushing back and it is going back and into the torque box, which is the, uh, the part of the body in white that is just behind the wheel. And you can see that there is a very thick uh, plate that's been bolted in where, this, uh, where the tire would impact the body in white. And it's not just a thick plate. There is also a can that's been welded behind this plate uh, to help absorb the energy from the tire hitting the, uh, hitting the body in white. And by doing all of this, uh, it has helped Ford. They've passed with a good test on small overlap, so they, are, so they, they were able to get past it. Uh, and with a vehicle that's this heavy, 4,500 pounds, it's a much different strategy than, than a ICE car or an ICE crossover vehicle. One of the things that um, um, I like, uh, again, on here is that <clears throat> most, uh, most car companies will stick with one material and they don't do anything else. I'm not sure if it was me, I'd pick, um, I'd pick uh, magnesium, but I'm not sure whether this is magnesium or aluminum. But again, the rationale behind this is both magnesium and aluminum have better crash worthiness than, uh, than steel does in certain applications. And Ford used the right material here uh, to make sure that this crash, or when this crashes, it'll absorb more of the energy than you would get if it was just maybe a steel beam. A steel beam will bend, but sometimes what you want to have it is soaking up energy and then uh, either not deforming, but actually fracturing. And that actually makes things a little bit better in some crash um, situations. So, so uh, the last thing, I guess, is, uh, is the, the little electronics box. <clears throat> we... Um, really applaud uh, Ford um, a little bit again because what we're doing here is this box is snapped into uh, this, this, uh, this bracket. Um, and that part's great. Uh, the only difference is that we don't understand why uh, you do that. Um, the space, this is underneath the fender, and uh, the space here is usually um, of no value. It has um, uh, nobody wants it in space claim in the olden days, but now with SORB, this becomes space that could be usable. And this is a controller box. <clears throat> and uh, this controller box is kind of serious, but they put this little platform on it. Now, how could we redesign this so that we could eliminate the little box here? Because really, this is nylon six and it's kind of um, expensive. And why, and then it's got two screws that hold it in place. They did do a good job. It's kind of a hook and then two screws. But really, what you want to do is uh, take this massive connector. And so right here, you can see that this is a right angle. So this will where the circuit board will be, and then some of the powder chips will stick up here. So why not take this, turn it that way, then take this and slap it here and get rid of that. So now your connector would go in click like that, and I like the connector. Anyway, that connector would come in here and snap in place. All of a sudden, look at, I, I, I've, I've, I've created something where the profile shrinks, and I get rid of a part that's probably gonna cost, what do you think, two bucks, something like that? They're about. <clears throat> so this gets rid of this. A couple of screws, something that's off the, uh, off the inventory list. Anything that you can take off the inventory list is a good idea. And it makes it easier for the operator because all he has to do is snap, click, and then you pull this arm in and click it shut. 
So, and that gets us to the fender itself. Why don't you take over for that? All right, I'm <clears> looking <throat> at the fender attachment brackets that are here. You, there's a front fender attachment and then an upper fender attachment. This is a separate stamped piece that's been bolted on to a tab that's come off of a welded on piece from the body in white. Uh, this could have been done with just extending this tab out so that you have your fastening point integrated into the body in white piece. Uh, it would remove the fastener that's in here and it would remove the need to stamp this extra piece. And then when we look at this, uh, the top fender fa uh, connection, there are two fasteners that will hold the fender to the body in white. And to be able to create this, they have a stamped piece, a small stamped bracket here, and then a large stamped bracket that is welded onto that. Um, and there, it, it's very large running across both sides. Um, alternatively, they could have just used two smaller brackets about the size of this one uh, welded on to the body in white. So you could just body in white. You could just come up with it uh, and come over and you would still hit your same fastening points for your fender. You would just remove the extra stamped piece and you would remove a lot of the weight that's in between. Actually, if, if, uh, if I was given this assignment, uh, if I was still doing that sort of stuff, um, I would look here and, and do exactly what, what Ben said, but I would also try and do one more thing. Is there a way of making it so that the bracket that holds this screw and the bracket that holds that screw, could they be the same bracket? And could they be welded on in body in white? Why are they bolted on later on? So I think that that would be one of the things that we would try and do. Any time that you can reduce weight, as, as Ben said a second ago, you want to try and reduce arrow, or sorry, reduce the drag, the coefficient of drag for arrow. Um, the other thing that, that you look at is, um, is what can we do for friction? So wheels and bearings and whatnot, what can we do to get rid of friction? But the other thing that really is critical for, for range is weight. And I'm guessing when we get this done, this is going to be, um, it won't be a kilogram, but it'll be probably a, enough grams that that it, you, it would pay for itself to eliminate. So one, two, three, and four. That, that kind of stuff is the things that we should try and look at all the time. How can we get rid of these things? And by the way, one thing, when we look at this, there's somebody gonna say, well, we did, they did this job in this fashion because they wanted to save material. Well, uh, that didn't work out quite well either. So if you look at this, this if you look at unfolding this, you fold this up, and then you've got this tab that goes down to here. But then on this side, the tab goes down even further. So the scrap that you would be getting, or off-all is what the technical term is, the off-all is about the same. And if I nest these things, if I nested this one with its brother going in the opposite direction, I could probably even save material, even if I stuck with this, which I don't think I'd want to, but even if I stuck with this, I could still get rid of some of the material waste. So anyway, we done? We are done for today. Good, okay, well, thanks very much for watching again. Um, we're very happy that, uh, that things have worked out well. I hope that you enjoyed the, um, the uh, analysis that we did on the ID4 battery tray. Um, that came out really, really well. One of these days, maybe we can tell you how much money came out of it. Uh, so we thank Sabic for that. Um, and one last thing, personal. Um, <clears throat> um, if you happen to live in the uh, Detroit area and you're looking for a condo, I'm selling mine. <laughs> um, so uh, so um, uh, it's a nice place. Anyway, just go to um, sales at Lean Design and uh, that's how you can get in touch with me. Thanks very much for watching. Keep tipping those cashiers and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.